Hello, parents and guardians. I'm sorry about the Facebook Live not going up at 3 o'clock. We had some technical difficulties with the iPad. This is Miss Luce, and I'm the one to contact with any of the Chromebook questions, and I'm also your children's technology class teacher. So I just wanted to show you a few things on here. Um, first of all, if you're on the St. John the Beloved School, you probably already know how to go to Teacher Pages, come down to Specials, and then over on the left, where you see all the teachers' names, you can click Mine. And then on the left, I list what each class, what each grade is doing for the week. But I also have up here a link for Chromebook information. So that's one way to always access it, and I'll keep this updated all the time. Another place to always access it when you need it is on our Facebook page. And it's St. John the Beloved Technology at SJBDEL. So if you follow it, then you'll get updates on anything I post. Um, right now, the only thing above this is our 530 session. But I have pinned this note up here and we'll leave it up here and I'm going to make it be on the top until we get back to school. If you go on here and click see more, this will open up. Oh, let me get this out of my way here. Okay, so this will open up and I've tried to put everything in here that you'll need to know so that you can refer back to it whenever you, you know, have a question. Um, first of all, why, do we, why did we choose Chromebooks? We chose Chromebooks because first of all, they're more financially um, available. They don't cost as much as a MacBook Pro or an iPad. Another reason we chose them is because we do use the G Studio, Google Apps for Education is what it used to be called. And your children use this for everything. They use Google Classroom, Google Docs, they use their Gmail. And on top of that, we have a protection called Gaggle. And only the Chromebooks can be registered in our, our Chrome management console, which lets us say what apps go to the Chromebooks and which apps are blocked, um, things like that. So without that management piece, we would be running around here like crazy trying to do this. The management piece is well worth the $30 um, that it will cost. So that's why we decided to go with Chromebooks. And also because they update themselves. You don't have to worry about updates. You don't have to worry about virus protection. All that runs in the background and you never have to worry about it. Okay, so here are the required specs. It must be a Chromebook. It can't be an iPad or anything else. It must be a Chromebook. It must have at least four gigabytes of RAM. Most of them coming out now do have four gigabytes of RAM. Anything less than that has some trouble running some of the online textbooks, which are interactive. They have videos, um, they have quizzes, they have different things that the kids can do to help them learn. And on two gigabytes of RAM, it just doesn't run very well. You also want a faster processor. I'm not the person to ask about processors. I go to Mrs. Morgan and I say, how does this one look? And she'll tell me it's adequate or and not adequate. Or sometimes she'll say, this is great. This is going to have a really fast processor and it's going to work great in class. Whenever a child comes in to me with their Chromebook saying, this won't load for me, but it loaded for everybody else in the class. And I call Mrs. Morgan, our IT person, to look at it. Every time it turns out it's someone with two gigabytes of RAM. And it they sometimes have to wait a little longer for it. <coughs> Excuse me. You must have a carrying case that's used exclusively for the Chromebook, and it has to have a pocket and either handles or crossbody strap. Now, this has always been required, but this year we a lot of kids weren't following it, and we had multiple children a day coming in asking for a loaner because they broke the Chromebooks. So we have started really, really enforcing this and now we very rarely see a broken Chromebook. It really does make a difference. When you think about the fact that your child is going to carry this to school and from school every day and they're going to be carrying it in the hallway between classes, you really want some good protection on this. Uh, any child that does not comply with it won't be eligible to use a bar, one of our loaners, if you have to send theirs out for repair. So, you know, you're investing in this and you want to keep it really secure and limit your damage and limit the time that you have to spend on taking it back to for warranty repairs or anything. Um, so you want a good, good Chromebook case. A sleeve alone, which doesn't have handles, it just won't cut it. 
And a shell, that it, a shell alone isn't good, but a shell's not a bad idea. A couple of the kids have told me they like to have a shell on it and also put it in a crumble case because that gives them some extra protection. Okay, earbuds. A lot of the applications that your child will be using in class involve sound. And if they're working on it uh, all at the same time, of course, they're going to need earbuds. We say no headphones because they tend to get broken when they're inside that Chromebook case. Oh, I'm sorry. One more thing up here about it being exclusively for the Chromebook. Their carrying case cannot have books in it. It's the pressure of the books against the case can, or against the uh, Chromebook can break the screen even from the outside. And we've had other kind of damage too. So the Chromebook case must have nothing in it, but the Chromebook, the earbuds, the mouse, maybe a pencil. Um, so they shouldn't be carrying anything else in there. Now a mouse, this is required for next year's fifth graders. The fifth grade teachers let me know that they really, really want the kids to have either, either a wireless or a standard USB mouse. Um, sixth grade is not requiring it, but most of the kids do end up purchasing them and say they like working with the Chromebook a lot better with the mouse. So, okay. Now, these next specs are not required. They're highly recommended. Insurance. Um, you know, all your child needs to do is drop that and break it one time. And if you don't have insurance, yikes. So I highly recommend that you get insurance. Uh, make sure you investigate it, find out all the details. How long is that insurance coverage? What is it going to cover? Is there a deductible? How many times can you send it back under the warranty? Do you have to pay shipping? So really look into that. A rotatable or dual camera. Um, we have not had those these in the past, but we're getting to the point where teachers are saying, wow, I've got this great project I want the kids to do, but the Chromebook camera faces them, not doesn't face out so they can use it as a video camera. Well, now there are a lot of brands out there that have the rotatable camera or have a dual camera. Um, so it really will enhance work on projects. If you already have a Chromebook and it doesn't have that, no big deal. We'll still make it work. Um, but if you're out shopping for one, look for rotatable camera. Touch screen, completely optional. That's up to how your child likes to work on it. And the same for screen size. Find out what your child prefers. I'm working on one of the larger screens because my old eyes just can't see on those tiny screens anymore. And I spend so many hours a day on it. Some of the children say they like the larger screens for accessing the textbooks. Others say, no, I like the smaller ones because they're lighter weight and they're easier for me to deal with. And it doesn't take up as much room on the desk. So you might want to check with your child, have them try out different ones before you purchase to find out. When I was putting all this together a few months ago, I sent a poll out to all of our current middle schoolers. I wanted to get their feedback on their preferences. And here is a link to the spreadsheet that all of their answers went into. It's worth taking a look. You can see that, you know, some of them prefer one size, some prefer another, how they felt about a touch screen, if they thought it would be a good idea or not. And same thing with the rotatable camera. Also in the last column, they got to give any advice to you, um, the parents, for shopping for your child. And some of them wrote some really um, interesting things. So that's worth checking that out if you have a few minutes. Now, I've had so many parents say, where should we go buy this? And in the past, we have gone out, found a vendor, and let the parents order through us. Um, but there are so many options out there now. It's the Chromebook market is just crazy. But like we just went over the different screen sizes, touch screen or not, what kind of camera. So we're leaving it up to you to pick them out this year. Um, Staples and Best Buy, I've gone in the past few weeks and checked out. They have a really good selection. The price is good, but their four year or three year, year accident protection program the plan's not worth it. It's so much money and the coverage isn't that great. The convenience is you can walk right in the store and hand it in instead of having to ship it. Um, so the one on Amazon that I'm looking at to purchase more loaners for the school, the link is right here. And it is a, but we have one parent who's already purchased it. It advertises itself as having all those, not only the required specs, but also the ones that are recommended and it's built very sturdily. Um, it has reinforced hinges and everything else. So it's supposed to break less often, hopefully. Um, 
it, they keep ranging in price from 191 to 199. Um, it, it keeps it changes multiple times a day. You know how it is on Amazon. So if I were you, I'd put it in your cart and then keep checking until the price is down closer to 191, 192. If you choose to get that one, and they've been having the Square Deal three-year insurance on sale for forty dollars, which is a great price. But it's been at that price for a couple of months. Once you go to the four-year, I did try and find the, the Square Deal four-year cost over $200. So it's more than the cost of the Chromebook. So um, I think the $40 one's a really, really good offer. I wish they would have such a good offer on the four year also. Um, so here's a link to that. Here's a link to the very, very heavily discounted three year accidental protection plan. Um, remember to read all the fine print so you know what is and is not covered. But when it comes down to it, it is up to you to purchase your Chromebook wherever you want and find what works best for you. Okay, so what happens next? Please have your, well, you have to have your Chromebook by the end of August. The last couple of weeks in August, we'll be offering what we call the Chromebook boot camps. There we'll go over the acceptable use policy and we'll go over our specific rules that have to do with using Chromebooks in the classroom. Because as you can imagine, if we were not having very strict rules on the use, in school the kids would be playing games in class and everything else instead of doing what they're supposed to be doing so we go over all that at the boot camps we we spread them out over a two-week period so you know hopefully everyone will be able to make one of them um and different days some at night some in the daytime and this year we're also going to do it on facebook live or as a recording as i'm doing this one right now um, at that time is when you pay the additional fees of $44 and that covers the, the Google Chrome management console license, which lasts for the whole time your child's here, unless you go out and purchase a new Chromebook at a different brand, um, then that has to be repurchased. It also covers, um, we have something called Gaggle, which checks everything your child does in their Google Apps for Education account. Every email, every chat session, every document, every everything, looking for anything inappropriate. And um, you know, if they find that it's something that might be inappropriate, they notify us so that we can we can look into it. Um, and also we have software on every teacher's computer so that they can see every Chromebook in their classroom and make sure the kids are on task and they're not just going crazy and they're playing games or not doing the correct things. So all of that comes out to $44. So that will be due at the boot camp time. We will send out, once we get the dates set up, I will send you a registration form in early August. And you know, so make sure you, you bring your Chromebook with you then. <clears throat> in August, excuse me, start, I'm starting to lose my voice, allergies. In August, you'll also receive email directions on how to enroll the Chromebook in our management console. Now, if you go and buy your Chromebook right now, or if you already own it and your child's using it before the boot camps, there's no problem with that. It's just it'll have to be what they call wiped before it can be enrolled in the management console. And I'll send you directions to do that. It doesn't take long. And then I'll give you the directions. It's only a couple steps to make sure it's enrolled the, the proper way. But they do warn us on the Chromebooks, there's something called power wash, which sets it back to factory reset or whatever. And at that point, it's no longer eligible to go in the management console. So it can't be used in school then. So please make sure you don't power wash, whatever you do. Also, a couple of weeks into the school year, um, I'm going to offer some after school and evening sessions for parents who want to learn more about the whole G Studio thing, which their children are using. And it's voluntary. It's just for if there's something you want to know. You can also shoot me an email if you have ideas of things you want covered. I'm hoping to do a lot of it through these webcasts so that you can access it whenever it's convenient for you and can go back and rewatch it anytime. And I'll keep those posted on the Facebook page also. Okay, and I'm going to have students create some of them too. They're getting really good at these kinds of things. Now, here's my email address. Please don't hesitate to contact me with questions or concerns anytime. I check my email frequently, uh, even in the summer. I'm going to be away for two weeks and I probably won't have access. But other than that, I usually get back to you pretty quickly. And um, I hope this helps. Thank you and have a lovely evening.